All right, welcome to part two of the risk tutorial series. We're going to talk about expansion and some of you are wondering why I'm redoing this video or why I'm re-uploading it. It's mainly just because I wasn't happy with how it came out the first time. So let's just make it a little better this time. So let's just jump into a game. So if you're the host and you don't know how the host settings works, don't worry. If it's an FFA, just click start. You don't have to do anything else if you're planning to, pay, uh, to play an FFA. But if it's a 1v1, you just tick this box and click start game. Or click start, sorry. All right, first thing we want to do is we want to increase our income. So we scan the map, we look around, and we look for two income countries. And by two income, I mean countries that have two cities like Hungary or Sami. Uh, these are also good options. These are three income countries. And by three income countries, again, I mean countries with three cities because they will give you uh, three income because they have three cities. So this will give you two income, this will give you three. So let's just four gold straight into this. So if you're very new to the game, you can just rally point over here, press Q four times. These follow the QWE format. And then we're gonna have to do a little bit of micro. Hopefully we watch the controls video. So we right click H. Right click H until we're in position and we should get 7 income in our turn 1. And our turn 2 is going to be a little obvious. We can go into East Greenland or we can take another 3 income country. But the important thing here is that we start with small countries. And we keep taking small countries until later we work our way up to the bigger countries. Because let's say we started you know, this uh, region first. This would just be too time consuming to do turn 1. It's not ideal. It's just so much better to just throw four guys into something like Bosnia, especially because actually around Bosnia, so around this region, the Balkans, there's a lot of uh, two income countries. There's a lot of small countries that you can start taking everywhere. So you can see my income is seven over here because you get a base of four income and then you get plus three from this country and you'll get plus two from this. It'll show at the end of the turn, which is you can see the timer over here. So yeah, that's basically what you want to do turn one and then turn two onwards in an FFA. But let's go over a small problem with this. Um, before I actually do that, let's say I wanna throw my four gold in Sammy. Let's say I throw it over here in Sammy, but for whatever reason, the opposing player over here, because it's an FFA, starts spawning on me randomly. And I have to go back because I'm gonna be feeding this guy. Or feeding him kills because every four kills you get uh, plus one gold which is called bounty so let's say that happens and i'm sitting here in sammy i'm four income i don't know what to do i'm feeling lost let's see how do we avoid that happen uh from that sorry how do we avoid that happening all right let's start one manning by one manning, I mean we'll take a country, a two income country with one gold. We actually have a marine rifle, which is nice. We're going to put him in position and A click. And marines actually are a little stronger than normal riflemen, so this guy is always going to win. So we don't have to look at that again. Uh, let's do it in check as well. But this is going to be a little different. Okay. We actually got the first shot here, so we don't even really have to do this, but we traded three shots and we select the city, press V on our keyboard to swap defender. Over here, right click, and then H when we're, we think we're in position. And remember, if you get the position wrong, you just keep right clicking and then H to slowly inch forward until you're in the right position. And we should get check before the turn ends and we're going to get Catalonia. So now imagine someone pulled back on us in check, or they started spawning on us. Oh well, we lost check, but at least we have Catalonia as our backup, so we won't be four income turn two. Let's just go over a quick example of how to, you know, AK. What's it called? A three income country with two gold. So the minimum we have to spend here is going to be two gold because if you noticed. Our riflemen, when we kill the enemy defender, they become the new defenders. So we do have to spend just the lowest we can spend in Jordan. So we press H here. So we notice that we put two guys here. They traded some shots. And now our guy over here will be winning. And over here, we're just going to do a normal one man. 
We left click this, press V and swapped it out. And H. And we took this essentially with two gold. So yeah, turn one. This is a better way to do it. And remember, you have four income in a, what's it called? Uh, a typical risk game. Well, actually, in every risk game. I don't think there's any alternative modes with more than four uh, gold at the start, so. Let's look around here. Let's try to get a lot of income this time. Let's do Moscow. Okay, nice. Let's do Estonia. And let's do Karelia. We're looking good over here. The Marine Rifle should win. Uh, let's move this guy back because he might die. And then position these two guys over here. And we're going to left click this guy and swap him out. We're going to position him over there. And we should be looking pretty good to get that... Uh, Max possible income turn one. You can actually get more income, but we don't have to talk about that right now. So I'm actually not going to get this in time because it's 20 seconds to kill it. And we started a bit late, but we can spam swap. So we're going to... The spam swap, we left click the city and press V on our keyboard and then left click. And we just keep doing that repeatedly. And we do way more damage to uh, enemy riflemen. We can also use this against players to get a damage boost. So now we got 12 income turn one. And that's sick. So yeah, that's how to essentially play to turn one. That's how to take countries with one or two gold. So remember, just start with small countries, keep taking small countries around your region, and then move on to bigger countries later when you have more income. All right, let's start talking about how we expanded an actual FFA now, like turn two and onwards and all that. So let's say it's an FFA. The main difference between FFAs and 1v1s, by the way, are mainly just the fog. As you'll see in a bit. So in FFA there is no fog. You can see everything. Alright. So let's say this was a real game. You might be tempted to do this. Especially after you watch the. First part of this video. You Let's say we're going to one man. This. So we position this over here. The rain rifle is going to win. This guy we got to swap him out. Let's go back, press H over here, and let's also try to get Azur. Because the nice thing about Azur is that the, our city is really close to the rifleman that's in position, so we can spam swap him. So, after we've done this, we have 15 seconds to start planning our turn 2. So, there's a lot to think about here. Um, you might be tempted to do something like this, and this wouldn't be too horrible to do. Remember, you also get a free spawn, so from every two income country, you get one spawn. And three income countries provide two spawns. It's usually about half the country. So let's A click this here. So we're expanding currently in the Middle East and we're taking Greenland at the same time. And this isn't so bad to do. But there's something to con that's really important to think about here and a lot of people don't consider this. So we're actually going to try to also get Disco Bay. We're not going to get Syria this turn, but that's fine. We've got it set up. We're taking the bottom city. Hopefully we'll try to get Disco Bay. So we probably will get this go bay and later we can also set our spawns so we can press Q W or E W over here to move them to Syria and start taking this but that's let's not worry about that too much right now. Uh, so the issue with expanding like this it's not bad in of itself but the problem here is that um, you have to ask yourself in your head am I the Middle East player or am I the islands uh, player because a lot of people don't think about that. So what's your current sphere of influence right now? You're kind of spread out. You're in Middle East and you're in Greenland. Which means that there might be a guy expanding in the islands around here. And he might be looking at your lands in Greenland. He'll be tempted to attack you. And there might be a guy in Egypt expanding. 
or a guy expanding around Central Europe and he's going to Turkey, he might be also thinking about attacking your lands over here. So now you're at risk of being attacked by multiple players all over the map. And that's not too ideal. So obviously we want to maybe expand in one place mainly. So there's nothing wrong with expanding in two places as long as we don't commit too much gold to the second place. We're going to decide one place in our head. This is our main place. You know, I'm the Middle East player, so I'll commit all my gold to the Middle East and some extra gold to Greenland. That should be your thought process. So that if you do get attacked in Greenland, we abandon it, we forget about it, and we prioritize the Middle East. I mean, we can't defend Greenland, but we run into a really common issue that a lot of players have. So let's say, and this is a really frequent thing that happens. So let's say I own Crete and I own all of Scandinavia. Like I own Norway, Sweden, Denmark. I own all these countries up north and someone attacks my Crete. A lot of players will defend Crete to the death. And an issue with risk is that you can spawn units really quick. Um, or let's say they'll make an SS like here at 20-ish income. And this could be a huge disaster. If the guy in islands, let's say there's a guy typically in the islands, he sees you doing this in Crete, he might be smiling right now and dropping on all your ports. And remember, if you lose this single port, you lose the income of all of Norway. So that's another inherent risk with uh, big countries, is that if you lose a single city, you um, lose the income of that entire country. That's also why having a lot of small countries is nice, because let's say I have all of this. I lose this city, it's fine. I lose two income. I still keep the rest of my income over here. So yeah, if you do spend all your gold defending a random island on the opposite side of your you know main lands because over here you should be thinking i am the scandinavian player you know I'm, I'm i care about what's happening in the islands i care about what's happening in russia i care about what's happening you know over here because these are all the this is my sphere of influence this is the stuff around me that i care about i don't care about crate really i i'm not gonna spend my gold here because let's say i do make the ss here and I repel the invading force, but I'm being attacked, you know, by the islands player all of a sudden. Well, taking this SS around all the way from this side of the map to the other side is just not. By the time we even get to here, we've pretty we, we probably lost all our lands, and the other guy can just respond with his own SS because he has the income of all our previous lands. So. Yeah, ideally, we want to just mainly ask ourselves in our head, you know, what am I? Am I the Middle East player? Am I the Russia player? So it's okay to expand in two places at once. Just remember to commit the bulk of your gold to the place that you decided this is my main, you know, place that I care about. And then spend some extra gold to get some nice expansion, maybe in Greenland. Because there's nothing wrong with giving it up. Like we took... uh. You can take Nashville if you have the bottom city with two gold, and then you immediately get three income. So you got good value out of it. You don't have to defend this to the death. It's okay to give it up early even. And we're going to also run into uh, some meta positions in risk as well. So there are meta positions in risk that a lot of people will care about. And I'll just briefly go over them. So. Uh, one of the strongest ones is the Middle East, which is all of this corner. Like the nice thing is that it's in the corner, so they don't have to worry about what's right of them. They don't have to care about what's south of them because there's nothing south or, you know, east of them. They're in the corner, and let's say they have it stops over here at Mace and Bulgaria, which might not be obvious, especially when we say the Middle East. Like these are obviously not in the actual Middle East, but typically this region will like to take these two countries and this country, like the south of Europe, because these are really strong defensible positions. Same with uh, Georgia and Azer. They'll stop around here because these are strong defensible positions against the Russian player and against the Central European player. And over here against the Western player, they only have to worry about, you know, like the seas or the navy. And another strong point of this is that... um. Basically, in an actual risk of fate, there's, let's say, over 20 players sometimes. 
there's a lot of chatting going on and that can get overwhelming. But now let's say I'm the Middle East. I own this position. I only really care about what the guy in Russia has to say, the guy who owns South Russia, the guy who owns this stuff, the Central European player. I care about what he has to say and I care about what the Western player has to say. So that helps me filter out the chat because I only care about what these three guys around me say or potentially a few more if there's a random guy in Crete that you're deciding to spare. Um, I don't care about, you know, what's happening in Iceland. I don't care what, like, the ch about the chat between the guy in Scotland and Iceland. Like, if they're raging at each other in chat, I might look at that and laugh at that, but, like, we're not going to get involved. We're not going to say anything. We're not going to bring an SS and start invading Karelia or do something really dumb over here. Because let's say we do bring that SS to Karelia and we start spending all our gold here. Well, all of a sudden, all our actual neighbors might start attacking us. We're going to get hit by the Central European player, the Russian player, and that's a problem. And there's... It's not just that we're getting teamed. It's that our army is over here. You know, getting our army all the way back to the Middle East is not realistic. So let's say I decide to start a war with the Western player. That's fine. And then I get teamed by the guy in Central. It's not as bad because my army over here, my navy, I can bring it around here and cut off the Central European player. Like I can use the same army over here to help me with this war. But if I'm over here for whatever reason, then I can't use this army to help me with any of these wars in the south, which is where the bulk of my lands are and the bulk of my income is exposed. So yeah, just keep in mind about your position and let's go over just quickly, uh, sorry, the other meta positions. So there's also the West. Uh, it stops at France, Switzerland. They can often take Belgium, Netherlands because it's quite easy for them to attack. But this area is generally strong to defend against. Or oh, sorry, this is a strong defensive area. We don't have to go over why, but it just is. Um, position, actually, we'll, we'll actually go over that a little bit right now. Uh, position is obviously just quite important risk because the circle is at the bottom of the city. So that means it's also easier to expand. It's easier to be here on the south rather than the north. Because if I'm over here, I can just position two riflemen here and it's really easy. But if I'm over here, I'm typically going to have to just shove a lot of riflemen into this city. Because I'll just be getting hit by the city to take it. Or unless I want to path all the way around south to get over here. And that's not realistic usually. That's just too time consuming. So yeah, generally the south is stronger. Um, in risk, so that's what people mean by they have position. And the other meta position, this one's obviously a little more obvious, the islands includes the UK, Greenland, and Svalbard. And there's also the Russia position and the Central European position, which is around here, and then Scandinavia, which I went over. Scandinavia also includes the Baltics often because the person who controls these ports can often cut the guy, in, you know. They can cut Sweden and Finland. And Scandinavia has a lot of big countries that can easily be cut, so they care about the Baltics. If they don't own this, then you definitely care about what this guy over here has to say in the chat. So yeah, those are the, mo like the most common meta positions. And remember, just because, let's say, you're in islands, you own UK and Iceland, you don't have to always kill the guy in Greenland. You can expand in other locations. But just remember that before you do that, make sure you're at least friendly with the guy in, uh, in Greenland before you do that. And just remember that he's also probably looking at your lands as well, because these are the con positions. Like typically the guy in Russia is eyeing the rest of Russia. The guy in Middle East is eyeing Turkey to finish it off or to get all of the Middle East eventually. So yeah, we'll just go over some common FFA mistakes and some replays real quick. All right, let's just go over a quick FFA example. Um, we don't have to pay attention to the chat at all. Don't worry about that. Um, so I noticed often a lot of people complain about getting teamed. And by getting teamed, I mean two people are hitting them unfairly, which is you know part of an FFA. Um, if that's happening to you very frequently, it's because one of two things is happening. You're expanding weirdly or you're not paying attention to the relevant chat around you. So like you might have, let's say, I don't know, let's imagine your, your peach and you decide to attack light blue. Maybe you missed in the chat that Minton 
Maroon, Light Blue, all decide to enter an alliance. So now you actually made an enemy with these two guys as well. So that's just a random example. So either you've missed some chats or you're expanding weirdly. So in Peanut's case, he uh, expands really weirdly. He's obviously all the way up here in islands. And I'm going to presume that he's friendly with Peach uh, before he did this. I didn't really read through the chat. I kind of just skimmed through. So we'll just make the assumption he is friendly with Peach and he starts fighting Teal, which ends up working out actually. So let's skip ahead to his next situation. Okay, so he does end up getting Spain, Portugal. Um, and I've... I'm pretty sure he hasn't made peace with Yellow. He should be aware that Yellow is interested in this land. Yellow is interested in taking the West eventually, clearly. Because often players, when they're in unusual positions, Yellow understands that this is his main position, but he wants to take one of the meta positions I talked about, which is the West. So a lot of players will make decisions like that or based on that uh, thinking. So I think Pina does eventually peace deal over here. And... Remember, I'm not trying to call out Peanut or anything. I honestly have no idea who Peanut is. I don't know the name of Peanut. I haven't looked to the end of this replay. And this replay is quite old. I'd be very shocked if Peanut somehow remembered this was him and he felt called out. But yeah. So now he starts attacking Pink. And now this is kind of wild. This is really high risk over here. To attack Pink because... Let's look at it from Yellow's perspective. Even if Yellow isn't looking for the West... This peanut guy is about to be over here. He's going to border him here. And he's going to border him all around him here. Yellow is feeling really uncomfortable right now. If peanut takes all this land. Especially because. Yellow. His other two neighbors. He only has two other neighbors. Peach and Red. And both Peach and Red are the top two incomes. And Yellow is 25 income. So he. Is probably not interested in expanding east or north. But he is probably going to deal with peanut. For sure. I mean, it's easy for me to say that because I know he does. He is going to hit Peanut in a bit. Yeah, Peanut loses Spain and he also gets hit by Emerald. Emerald also shows up. So just remember, when you expand weirdly like this, you're often opening yourself up to, you know, like to more neighbors and more potential for getting teamed. Yeah. And Peanut does the typical complain about being teamed, which, I mean... In this case, he kind of just expanded weirdly. You know, honestly, him attacking this area was actually kind of fine. It worked out, but he really overextended with the Italy, Sardinia, Sicily expansion. So, yeah. Just keep in mind of how you expand. Because this was some, uh, like, this guy has no concept of what he is. Like, you know, he's not, he doesn't have the idea that he's the islands player. He's just looking for any land on the map, which. To be fair, if you're a very small player, like let's say all you own is central, yeah, it's okay to go all in in some other side of the map because all you have is one country. You're not really a nation. You're kind of just a rogue state at that point. So, yeah, you will want to, if you're really small and desperate, you will want to attack maybe a completely different part of the map and establish yourself somewhere else if you can't do it in Russia because you're surrounded by big powers. So, that was just a quick example. Of, uh, what not to do or how to not expand. All right, the rest of this video, we're going to talk about 1v1 expansion, and there's going to be targeted at the Wood Leaguers. And the Wood League refers to a league of new players. And there's actually an ongoing tournament at the time of making this video. So it's going to be mainly targeted at them. So a lot of Wood Leaguers really did a good job of uh, actually... Let's uh, sorry. Let's go over how to take a country with three guys. I think I forgot to do that. I did it in part one of the tutorial series, but let's just do it again. So let's just it's just for the sake of having it mentioned in the video. So an A click this, like this guy because he's being hit, and then target over there. That was a military disaster. Let's just repeat that. That was not the demonstration we needed. All right, let's uh, do it in Hungary. So I often don't honestly take countries like this pretty rarely because I often mess it up as you just saw. Well, so let's swap that guy out. 
So to select this other guy, I'm holding shift. So I had this guy selected and I held shift to select this guy. And I A click this nearby defender. So this is how I like doing it. Uh, there is another way of doing this. Um, let's do it with three marine rifles. So you can also target your own rifleman. It doesn't matter what rifleman you target, as long as it's your own rifleman. All right, swaps. I'm holding shift, selecting that guy, and then I would target both of these. So if you're quick, you can actually target your own rifleman and not shoot him and swap the aggro, but I'm not quick, so I would prefer just, you know, a clicking a nearby rifleman that's on my screen. That's how I prefer to personally do it if I ever take a country with three guys. So let's just forget about that. I guess that's not something we have to do too often. So let's just go over the common wood leaguer mistakes now. Because wood leaguers, their turn ones are actually quite great. They got their turn ones mastered shockingly quick from doing a lot of practice. So we're going to try to get as much income as we can right now, turn one, because wood leaguers do get their turn ones pretty well. I really want to do Italy, but I'm going to resist the temptation because I don't think the average wood leaguer would do that. And now let's do Syria. Let's swap this guy out. Go over here. Now let's move this guy and one man this. We're actually running out of time, but we can spam swap over here. So, we should get this in time. Yeah, we'll get this in time. Alright, so now, in my head, I'm going to decide this is the area I'll micro. In other places, I'll just kind of spam gold. So, we'll just throw four guys here. We'll select this, throw four guys here. But here, we'll micro it. going to spawn an extra gold as well, actually. Select all these guys, move them up here. Now let's check on these other locations. Let's move them here. Let's move these guys here. Let's set them up like this. Let's uh, chill with these guys. Let's set this up first. Right, nice. I remember I'm inching forward with uh, using H and right click. Let's just make sure we get full. Actually, now we're, we're good here. We don't even have to really micro this. We got four guys, but let's just do it anyway. Because, like I said, we're going to micro Italy. Alright, nice. Um, that was a really easy way to get above 20 income turn 2, actually. So, a lot of wood leaguers really struggle with their turn 2s. Because, instead of just throwing 4 gold over here, or 4 gold over here, and then having 2 guys left over to just position here, they'll often try to take Libya with 3 gold. And they'll take Jordan with 2 gold. And they'll also try to micro Italy. So they're going to try to micro three different pla places at the same time. And that's just quite demanding even for me. So what I recommend when you're new to the game is start, decide in your head, you know, hey, this is where I'm going to micro. And these other spots, I'm going to just spam gold. Well, let's just try that again. We have a nice Romania. We also have Belarus. Let's just go over a Romania take. Okay, nice. Let's set this guy up. And then let's just do Belarus as well. This is also a really nice country to do. But before we do anything else there, let's first set up Romania. Alright. Now let's just set up Belarus, which is really easy and quick to do if we have these particular cities. I'm actually being hit here, but that's fine. We're going to go up here. So now, these are some, uh, again, you might say unusual spots, but don't worry about that. So I'm going to decide my head. I'm going to micro this place. This is where I will be efficient with my micro. But over here, because I just want to get into the middle, let's just full spend it. So Syria, we're going to take with 2 gold, or 3 gold actually, let's just make our lives even easier. Let's just set this guy up here. 
the disk gap here, select both of these, and a click over here. Now we don't have to look at Syria. Well, let's look at Cyprus. Okay, nice. And now we have a ball of units that we're just going to A-click around. I mean, we actually have nothing else to do right now. We have a spare one gold. We could maybe start one manning Sammy. Or we can just contribute to the ball of units. Or we can hold it in case we get attacked by an opposing player. Yeah, we're going to get, I think, above 20 income again. And let's just spend the extra gold here and just keep A-clicking here. You don't really have to do too much micro, to be honest, for this. Okay, nice. We got above 20 income. Let's try that one last time. So, again, I'm going to repeat this a million times because I'm seeing so many wood leaguers refuse to take this in. They will always spawn three guys over here in Austria and try to micro it while trying to micro these two spots at the same time. You saw that I didn't even try to do that. I just spammed my gold in one spot and I microed in another spot. This guy's not moving. Alright, he's moving. Now these countries, they're kind of nice because you can quickly swap them out. You don't even have to move. Here I do have to move. And H. Okay, nice. Let's do Sammy real quick. This one can be a little hard. If you're not used to it. And now let's set up Crimea because this is a really nice easy one. Because it's with the Marine Rifle. Let's go over here. Alright, let's start planning our turn twos. I am so tempted to micro here. But the problem is I see a lot of wood leaguers over micro these spots and it is very frustrating to watch. So um I think with these particular spots we are kind of forced to do that. Um let's just Alright, let's just decide we're gonna micro here. Or we're gonna spam our gold here. Our microing here, and let's also spam our gold over here. I still have three gold spare, so let's look for another spot to spam our gold. I think this is a good one. Let's just throw the three gold, it's fine. Let's make sure everything is going fine over here. Remember, this is the spot we're microing. Let's also double make sure this is going fine. Okay, we lost two guys over here, but that's fine. Well, we're set up to take Catalonia later. And we got this now. And we can start going into here. We can do the Diagro trick here, because we have nothing else to do. And we got 20 income again. And we aren't... Like, the important thing here is that it's about APM management. I'm not microing too many spots at once. I'm... Throwing my guys in one spot, and then I'm, you know, deciding this is the spot I'll micro. I'll just show people why I am so frustrated watching so many wood leaguers because they have like over 200 APM, but the APM is so wasted doing something insane. And this is after they've done such a difficult turn one. Let's just do our turn one pretty quick because wood leaguers, their turn ones are almost the equivalent of really high level players as well. So obviously when you do these at first, you're probably going to mess these up. Actually, you're going to be out of, slightly out of position, but if you do them, if you practice it enough, you'll... Honestly, it won't take too long to start, you know, being able to get these 12s or these 10s, honestly. Now these are such good spots, you could say. And we keep talking about Wood Leaguers full pumpy the middle. Remember, the middle is actually at one of these is the strongest position at low skill levels because it's the easiest place to expand. So even if you're messing up, you're still expanding okay here. And this is very frustrating to watch because now I'm thinking in my head, I would spam my gold here and I would micro Germany and I would have such a good turn too. But here's what the average Wood Leaguer does and it, it just drives me like over the edge. Um, they'll start doing this. Like they'll start microing all these different spots and then they'll move back. Okay, they've they got hit and they're panicked and then they'll do this. 
try to hit this again and they'll keep going back and they're on repeat doing this for an eternity until they eventually get it they eventually micro it right and that's fine but you see the issue here is that even though they did i did eventually get it then they'll try this again they'll always do this and let's just pot oh actually we are past okay so the issue here is even trying to do this last two this last country when I have 9 gold in my bank, even try to micro this, because let's say I failed it. Let's say I actually messed up. Let's say I got hit. They'll do this again on repeat. They'll, again, they'll do this merry-go-round, and it's so frustrating to watch. They have 9 gold in their bank. The turn is passing, and they start panic spending their gold. Now they'll start like spending their gold at like the last 15 seconds. You know, maybe they, they'll do this. And their turn 2 is just beyond destroyed, because they insisted on microing everywhere. There's no spot where they're just spending their gold and they're getting like 14 income turn 2. And it's so devastating to watch because you could get more income than this simply by just throwing 4 gold at every city blind and then taking your hands off the keyboard. Like you would be doing better if you just stopped sabotaging yourself. So. Just. So the actual best way to get better at risk is again i'm going to say for the million time is choose one spot in your head in turn two this is where you're going to micro and the other spots you're just going to simply spam the gold to make your life easier and we'll also oh shit i don't know i'm doing this i'll show you guys what i do when i mess up my turn twos because i did mention you're going to choose one spot to micro right and the other spots you're going to spam gold when you want to get better at the game, then you can later decide, all right, I'm going to micro two spots on two different sides of the map. But you want to build your way up to that. You don't go from just, you know, beginner to microing 10 different places at once. It's like, it's just such a self-sabotage that so many wood leaguers do to themselves. So this is set up. This is nice and set up. And I'll just show you guys what I do when I mess up. So I'm going to do those turn is where I'm going to try to take Ark with like 3 gold. I'm going to try to take Scotland with like 3 gold. Like I'm going to do those efficient expansions. But sometimes I mess those up. Like it happens to me as well. Like I would instantly start doing this to make my life easier. But let's say I really fucked up. Like let's say I really did something like this. Like I lost my guy and I went back. And I'm being hit here and I'm losing my mind. I'm to recover this. A lot of Woodleaguers their first reaction is to immediately try again. And no this is not the reaction. You insta start spamming your gold. If you've messed up your uh, efficient expansions, you can. Your first reaction is to do. Your first reaction trait should be to do this. To instantly start spending your gold to take the city quicker. Otherwise, we run into the issue where we've, you know. Forget about this. Uh, we've done something like this. We've gone in, gone back, gone in, and we spent 20, 30 seconds doing this. And the. That's half the turn spent doing almost nothing, really. So even if you do eventually fix it, your first reaction should be to just spend the extra two gold and then look away. Do something else with your time and your gold and make sure you're actually spending your gold. So yeah, if you just mess up, just spend the extra gold to fix it. Stop trying to do like insane turn two expansions. Like, um, I see... Like you're gonna see this in the Wood League tournament. Um, this is a really common one. Now, Bambucha actually did this pretty well. I really don't want to call it Bambucha. Damn, I got the wrong cities. What I want to show. Oh no, actually, I had the perfect city. I had the Libya port. Um, let's just do another dash FF dash NG. So dash FF stands for forfeit, and dash NG stands for new game. Let's just keep doing this until we get the right spot to de uh, right spots to demonstrate what I want to show. RNG is not on our side right now. If we do this long enough, I might have to do some uh, cuts. I think we're just gonna accept that this is as good as it gets. So we'll make a general. We'll go all the way here. We'll take the support. We're gonna make uh, an SS and get over here. And I just want to show what the classic wood leaguer thing to do is. So I'll often scream at a wood leaguer to four gold Algeria, but they'll never be a three gold. They're always going to throw the three gold. 
it doesn't matter if they have 20 gold in their banks. If you have 20 gold in your bank, you should not be doing... Like, you should not be microing three riflemen to take a city. There's just more things to do, like, better things to do with your time. Just please, spend the four gold. A click here, and then look away. You don't want to spend so much time... Like, you don't want to spend your APM on expansion, really. You want to, like, minimize how much APM is spent on expansion, really. Because it should be going towards messing with your opposing player. So, here's just some wood leaguer classics. It's They just love doing this. Turn 2 especially. So, Bambucha did this pretty well. But often... So, this city, you know, they often do this successfully. But this city is quite hard to do. And I actually did it, but they often mess it up. This often happens. Now, there's just so many things wrong here. Even if it's successful, even if you did it correctly, you know, nice job. But the issue here is that you spent so much time doing this. And did you really get that much efficiency? Like, you could have done this with three gold. Like, you could have just set up three riflemen over here. And then swap this guy up. Personally, I usually have a normal actual rifleman over here. I like just putting the normal rifleman here, two marine rifles here, and then just a clicking here and forgetting about the whole thing. Like I like having this set up just to show it a little better. I'll have the normal rifleman here that I got from the port. The normal rifleman started the ports, and I have two marine riflemen over here. Now, I've only spent one extra gold, and there's just so many ways that this can, you know, so so many less ways that this can fail and go wrong. Like instead, wood leaguers are just obsessed with getting the most efficient thing, and the problem they're doing this with like 10 gold in their bank, 40 seconds has passed, and they spent adjusting, you know, this random marine rifle over here, and it's so frustrating to watch this because there's no. There's no reason to often do these fancy, like, weird expansions. You're just making your life difficult for the sake of making it more difficult. Like, you know, I'm impressed that a wood leaguer did do this successfully. But this is just so insane to do. And it's such a big risk, because what if you get hit? Like, what if you mess it up? How do you even recover this? This is so difficult to recover. When I know how to recover if I get hit over here. Like, I'm going to make three riflemen. This is how I like to do it. I put three riflemen here, and let's say I get hit, I messed up. I know exactly how I'm recovering this situation. I'm spending an extra two gold, a clicking it, and then I'm going to look away. And then I'll usually have three marine rifles left over that I can just a click here and then forget they exist. And I'll usually get Libya just fine, almost always doing that. And it's so much less risky because when I say risky, I mean it's like less time spent. This time is a factor here. We only have 60 seconds in a turn, and this just takes so many seconds. And if you fail over here, you get hit. Like, how do you even? It, you have to send another rifleman around here, and one of that rifleman gets hit. And now you've wasted so much time doing nothing. So please just stop trying to get these like fancy expansions. Just spend your gold. Like, make your life easier. Throw the four gold. Like, if you see a three income country like this, and you have more than 20 income, and you're you know, name, like, just do it, take it like this, spend four gold, have the two left over here, and if you don't even want to micro this, from this city that you've taken, spend an extra two gold, or spend one extra gold, and a click it into here, and forget it exists. Because you're spending, like, wood leaguers just spend so much of their APMs expanding, and it's often a net negative, like, their micro is doing so much harm. And they'll also, another small thing is, let's say you want to take Italy. This is an important country to start early. And they'll often rally point here, ball up their units, go do something else. And the last 20 seconds of the turn, they'll remember to finally highlight everything and a click it up. But imagine if we just did it like this. Imagine if we just rally pointed up here in the first place and held Q. And now we can go and look at something else and forget that this is happening. And we'll get it in time as well, because Italy is quite time consuming to do. Like, I see a lot of wood leaguers take Switzerland like this, where they're spawning it like this, and it's so ridiculous because they don't want to lose any riflemen, but it's okay to just, you know, take it like this. It's okay to just rally point to yours, throw the four guys, and then you can micro it on the way. 
if you really want to. Yeah, doesn't matter too much. Um, let's talk a little bit now about turn three and onwards expansion. Let's talk about again uh, when you're 20 income and above. How do we expand? So this is where those I want to say I guess APM saving tricks like for golding this having two guys over here. This is where I'm going to be constantly expanding using those methods. So we're going to be doing this. This is some unusual expansion as well or turn ones, but it's fine. We'll do Georgia as well. And we have a hard one man to do actually. We have Serbia. Let's move this guy back. And let's just set up Serbia. So this is kind of a hard turn one. Let's go over here, set this guy up. I'm going to right click and shift click. And H. And we'll set this guy up. Put him here and let's just make sure Serbia is fine. This is fine. Also, if you're out of time, you can just 50-50 it by A-clicking into here. If you don't have enough time to go back and swap it out. Uh, so we are going to focus on more late game expansions. So we'll just play our turn 2 out again. Let's just hold Q. We're going to decide East Greenland is where we micro. And everywhere else, we spam gold. Let's A click all the way up here. Hold H and A click. And just keep A clicking like this and we're fine. So this should be okay should come turn 2. Now the important thing is, just because I have you know 10 seconds left in the turn I will micro this. Like if you have nothing else to do right now, this is okay to micro. It's completely fine. I'm going to A-click this here just so this guy over here wins the trade because, you know, at the beginning of my next turn, I don't want to be microing this stuff. Now this is where it's really important that we spam our gold, that we do, you know, start spending a lot of gold everywhere. We're going to like four gold this. Send four guys to the hungry city. Poland has a lot of seeds, so we're just going to have 4 gold here. Make sure we use the spawn as well. Just going to send 2 extra guys there. Uh, select. These guys should be fine to take this. Like, we can occasionally do some set setting up. Like, we can occasionally do this. As long as we're not doing this. We're not spending so much time. Like, let's say I tried to set this up and I fucked up. We insta-spend the gold. We hit click here, we actually have, we're taking this with three guys, so we will micro it, there's nothing else to do. So this is fine to micro, because I'm doing nothing else anyway. And that's how your expansion should look like if you're 20 income or above. And now we'll talk about how the Wood League expansion looks like and why I'm screaming and crying into the void every time. I asked them to take Belarus, they'll take it like this, even though they have 30 gold in their banks. Move back, back in. They'll keep sending random men to their desk constantly like this. And even if they eventually get it, it's like, okay. Like, this is so torture to watch. Because they have 29 gold in their bank. Why are we ever taking Belarus like this? And they do this everywhere. All their expansion looks like this. And it feels like I'm watching a horror movie that I'm trapped in. That someone could just four gold into the city, but instead they choose to do this. Where they just get hit by the tower. I'm so sorry to all the Woodleagues. I know I'm flaming them quite a bit. But it just feels so painful. To watch a Woodleaguer do this over and over again. And it's just. Spend the gold. You don't. It's okay to have some deaths against black. There's nothing embarrassing about. You know losing to black in quotes. As long as you, you have more income than your opponent. So yeah. If you're struggling to get 20 income or more. You're probably over microing. And you need to decide in your head, you know, one spot we're going to micro, and another spot we're just going to spam gold. Because that's almost f a foolproof way to get 20 income or more. 
So yeah, I think that's about all the common wood leaguer mistakes that I've gone over, and that's how you expand later into the game. You just ball up your units, A click, shift click like this. So I'm holding A, and then I'm holding shift to do what I just did, and I'm left clicking around. And you can actually also do this. It's like the city, hold shift, hold right click, right click, and now hold Q and your rifle right will just take Scotland for you. So I often, I'm not too used to this one, but there's also a really good way to get free income. And yeah, another I guess, I'm trying to think of other common wood leaguer mistakes last second before we end this video. Uh, another one is wood leaguers will often just start like random stuff like Finland. Like they'll randomly start Finland when they have like this stuff. Um, ideally expand where your spawns are nearby. Because using spawns is so strong. It's so rare that I see a wood leaker take like six of their spawns like this. Add two, three extra riflemen. And then get a bowl of units going. Or over here. Like they often forget to use their spawns for a while. Like they'll rally their spawns to fights. But they won't expand using their spawns efficiently. And another really common one that. I'm sure that if we look in the tournament, the Woodley tournament, we've seen someone do this because I've seen it so frequently. Like, again, I just want to mention that they're so reluctant to spend their gold. I wish Woodleaguers would actually follow the meme of full pumping middle. Because when I say, you know, like someone should full pump middle, I mean just full spend your gold, it should be zero instead of trying to do, you know, this deranged micro of microing 10 different places at once. Like, you might have seen me do it, but that's because I've obviously played this game a lot. I started, you know, practicing with, you know, I decide, you know, hey, I'll micro here and I'll spam gold over here. And eventually I built my way up to, I'll micro in two places and spam my gold in the rest. And then I built my way up to, you know, expanding in three places. Like, it's just about, you know, knowing how much can you do. You'll never see me try to micro in 10 million different places. And you'll see that when I do fail... Oh, sorry, I'm actually uh, right in AFK. Uh, you'll see that when I do fail, I'll just, I'm very quick to just select the city and spend some extra gold to fix my mistake because we don't want to be spending infinite time doing microing one city. That's just never good. And often, even if you mess up, there's no reason to not just, yeah, spend the gold. So you should never be microing a city for hours. Um, so that's just another pet peeve of mine as well is that I'll see what leaguers do this. They'll always four gold into Israel when they have 10 gold in their banks, not use their spawns. And let's say they do survive Israel. And then to just add more insult to like my mental that's just being eroded watching this gameplay is instead of spending two extra gold with these two riflemen to take this port, because remember they often have golds in their bank to do this. And all that they've done for the past 20 seconds is stare at this. They'll, do, they'll take us real with you guys. And it's... And this will often... If it was a smooth transition like the way I just did it now, it would be okay. But it's often looking like this. This is often the gameplay I'm seeing. And it's just... It, there's no reason to ever be in this situation. Because you have the gold. I wish people would just, you know, stop trying to micro and just stop, like make their lives easier. By just four golding things. So yeah. I think that's the most common with leader mistakes I've gone over and I think that's it for the video to be honest. I hope this helped.